Hello, welcome to my channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for those who have subscribed. Thank you for those who have reached out to me. Thank you. I want to thank you guys so much for just, you know, just being there, being supportive. You just don't know how much that means to me. Well, today is a rainy day where I'm at, and I can tell you right now, I plan on not getting anywhere today. But today I want to do part two of discrimination, EEOC issues that arise on the workplace, okay? Now, I'm hoping you like this this uh, this video, or, and I'm going to ask you to subscribe, like my channel, hit the notification buttons. So I'm not going to play, I don't play, you know, I need to start, but I'm not going to play no music because I like getting straight to the point about the issues that I'm talking to, okay? Uh, now, you know, as I get older and, you know, and it's very reasons, a lot of times we're dealing with uh, discrimination, harassment, retaliation, uh, wrongful termination on your job. It happens every day. People don't know it. Get fired on your day off, you know, uh, or, or get a write-up for no reason. You know, when I worked in corrections, you, it was just it was just common. It was common. I worked there for four years, and I, when I worked there, I was a correction officer. I'm gonna make the light in a little bit better. Woo! You gonna turn that down a little bit? Yeah, yeah. We are gonna turn that down because I want you to be able to see me. So anyway, so I worked in corrections for four years. I was in, in my twenties then. And the the rules and laws of, of harassment and stuff then was a lot different than what it is now. So uh back in the day, I mean, employers can get away with anything. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And Tennessee is at, at that time and still is. Um, a at will state. So if your state is a at will, that means that for the first 90 days, they can fire you for anything, but there's a catch to that. Now, when I, well, as I go along, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not practicing law, nor am I giving you legal advice. This is for educational purposes. Okay. Now they used to be able to, to fire you for no reason. They can fire you cause you wore yellow socks. They can fire you for anything. Well, laws have changed now. Loops holes have changed. And especially with the EEOC, which has changed. Now, I'm going to give you a story of what happened when I was 20. And then I'm going to tell you what th what's going on today. Okay. I worked four years as a correction officer. I was going to school then. And, you know, at, back then, you know, they had that old saying that after, you know, three months, 90 days, you're supposed to be dating somebody. Well, I wasn't. My, my job was to just... Watch them inmates, go to work, watch them inmates, make sure I, I don't get hurt, make sure they don't get hurt, and leave. Don't work that way. It didn't work that way. A lot of times, you know, after I, you would think that after me being in my 20s, and some people in corrections can still relate to this. You know, after, you know, I'm in, you know, after a while, you'd be like, you know, I'm not here I'm not, I don't go to parties. I don't want to go to your house and hang. I don't want to go to parties. I had kids to raise. I had two kids to raise. I wasn't trying to do anything. Well, after a while, I started getting harassed, sexual harassed. You know, supervisors mad at me because I wouldn't date nobody. You know, uh, at that time, I take that back. I had one child, and then I was having later on one on the way. Okay. And um, when I left, I had two. And I was going through so much. And, 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 you know, I had this operation manager that told me, hey, if you had any problems, you come and see me. So when it kind of got a little bit bad, I, I went to him, you know, and I wasn't no, I was a dainty little old thing. Hell, you know, I used to, oh, my goodness. I, ooh, I wasn't ugly. I mean, I'm, I may not be ugly now, but I'm not ugly. You know, I wasn't, blah. I carry myself very well, you know, especially when I'm going outside to work. So anyway, he called me up to his office and I'm thinking he finna tell me that he's finna help me and he's going to file charges and all of that. And he handed me a key, a door key. And I'm like, a door key? I'm, I'm, I'm going through harassment. I, what the? I need a door key for. 
Oh, well, uh, my friend owns some apartments. And, you know, I'm giving you this key. So if you ever want to talk to me again about anything, we can just meet up there and just talk and, and you know, just relax. I'm in my 20s. Lord have mercy, Jesus, sir. I, I, you know, and you, you know, you, you feel degraded, but you know, at the same time, you be like, well, you know, I, I, I need a job. I need a job, <sighs> sir. I thank you, thank you so much for the key. But I have a place, and you know, I, I have a place, and I'm in a relationship, and you know, I, I just. I don't go outside my relationship. What did I say that for? Being 20. Months later, I took my children to Six Flags. I took, you know, that this was when they went little. I took them to Six Flags. And I get a phone call. I put in months for my, my, my leave and was approved and, Get a phone call. I'm in St. Louis. I'm four hours away. Oh, you need to come back to work. Why? Because your leave was rescinded. It wasn't approved. Said, well, I put in for it three months ago. No, uh-uh. You ain't back at, you ain't here in 20 minutes. We're going to dock your pay for 10 days. And they docked my pay for 10 days. And that stress left me. I went, my hair came out. I had blackouts. I had thoughts of suicide. I had thoughts of, of, of going up there, handing them, and then killing myself. I thought of so many things. But unfortunately, I, well, I ain't going to say unfortunately. Fortunately, I left. I left. I was on leave for so long. And the attorney, I ended up suing them, trying to, you know, get things right. And the attorney that I, I um I met, he was just coming in and and stuff and you know and, and it went sideways. That was when I first started doing pro se. And uh years decades later, I ended up telling him who I was. I knew who he was, but I ended up telling him who I was. And we was at Wendy's in Memphis and he just told me he was so sorry. He told me he cried. He told me he was so sorry. He told me that if he, if I chose not to talk to him, he understood. And, and no, I didn't because, you know, he became one of my best allies, when, especially when I need something. I'm, I'm trying to really brainstorm and I, I don't know really. I know what to do, but I don't know how to do it. Then I, I call him and he tells me what to do, how to do it, and send me samples and stuff. So, you know, and we become uh, we become really good friends. Right now, he's running for judge. But nowadays, things that were happening then, nowadays, things are different. Because you didn't have people that were more coming out, that were, you know, coming out in a sexual orientation or, 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 or they, you know, diversity of race and it's a lot of interracial all of it it's a lot of stuff now but the harassment the core of it is still there do i think that black people harass people sure especially women especially women especially why i have no idea but especially women this is how you can kind of Get old, you know, get yourself prepared. When you first start noticing this, because when I, me, I pay more close attention to my managers, how they interact with everybody, how they interact with me. The last job I had, you know, I, uh, when somebody wa wait for you to come on, like I work from home, I get on at eight o'clock. When somebody is waiting on you, you get on at eight o'clock, they come at 8.03 and want to tell you some bad stuff right before you get ready to interview somebody else. That's that's stressful. That's stressful. So 
what you do is when you start noticing little things, I tell it anybody, any anytime you get a job, you 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 start working on at a job, you start working, you dealing with anybody. Again, customer service, you on the phone with a bill collector, you this. Everybody said, well, I got my smartphone. Yeah, but this, this can be submitted as a legal document. Emails can be submitted as a legal document. Tapes, anything that can be submitted as a legal document, a legal evidence, start doing it. Emails. And then don't just send your emails from your company job and keep them on there. No, send your emails. When, once you send it to whoever you need to send it, go on your send and send it to yourself in your personal emails. Because I guarantee you, they will start deleting your emails. When they fire you, they're going to get rid of all your evidence. So you start sending stuff to your personal email. I don't care what it is. Create a folder. Make sure you have that. Because I guarantee you, when it comes time for you to apply for unemployment, if it comes time for you to, to file a complaint, it's going to be your word against theirs. And I and nine times out of ten, it's two things, especially when they finna, uh, 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 when they retaliating against you. They talk about your performance and your attendance, the two things, two major things. They're going to talk about it because, that you, yeah, well, she was coming to work late. Well, she was, uh, uh, her, her performance was not up to par. But yeah, you keep track of your performance. I do. I notice that my manager is giving me praises, but they, they saying stuff inappropriate that I cannot understand. They stand, saying things that, you know, making me feel uncomfortable, making me feel embarrassed. Things that I've told them in confidence, they saying it in meetings. Yeah. Start sending emails. Send yourself an email. Screenshots. Under Rule 26F, that's a federal. Anything that they, they can't just, even when they fire you, they just can't do anything and say, we're going to, they got to put it in archives. But they're not going to give it to you. Document. Document. Now, the EEOC says it has to be 90 days of the incident. But let's say the incident is ongoing. You document it. You document it. It's from each incident. Document. Go First, you start off with the company. That's what I did. Start off with the company. Company, you know, I stayed, you know, after a while, I, you know, I'd start noticing that things that I was telling the Compliance lady, hmm, this had we having it in a meeting. We're having it in a meeting. So this is a joke. Then you have enough to go outside. Said, you know what? Well, Miss Miss Samantha, I, I filed an EEOC complaint and it didn't get worse. What do I do? Still document it. And you still the EEOC now. It's called retaliation. That's what most companies do. Let's say they fire you in the midst of what you did. Because it's one company that has a history of that. They fire you while you, 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 you filing a complaint. They fire you for whatever. I'm not going to say that it's going to be easy. But if you document it the way it needs to be documented, you make it hard for them to prove that you were that type of employee that they finna say you are. You make it hard for them to prove that they are doing it. Let's talk about emotional stress. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. It, it, it affects you. Being discriminated and retaliated or constructive termination, it affects you. I'm a, you, you know, a lot of people say, well, how do it affect you? Uh, you got to pay your bills. It affects your credit. It affects your mentality. It affects everything around you. You get depressed. You stressed out because you got to find a job. It, it affects every part of you. So it's not just that job that you, you, you left, that left you. It affects 
all of you. It affects everything around you. Your life. Because let's say you living with somebody or you're married. Then that person has to take the load of two versus one. EEOC offers mediation. They do. They offer mediation. So nine times out of ten, you ain't got, you don't have to, you know, sue EEOC or fight for you. But let's say EEOC don't fight for you. Maybe you just got a EEOC agent that, you know, they don't care. I I, I had one. They don't care. Trying to blame everything on me. And then when I came, the more he came, I came back at him. I then when he started asking for evidence, he got so tired of me. He just told me, look here, you, you, you need to put it in the portal. When I put it in the portal, man, he emailing me like, do you have any more? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. But the point is, is that let's say that they don't help you and you end up suing. The evidence that you submitted can be used in court. Even more so, you can show, go research the company. Find out what they, have they ever been sued for, for, for what you are going through. It's called pattern and practice. Yeah, so make sure you, but you research that. You can research that and you can submit them cases in court and look at what they say in that, in that thing. Cause they can, t the courts will tell you quick, what is it that makes it this case like this? What, what are the requirements? All you got to do is copy and paste. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. If a comp, if you know, it's not that you, once you prove that, once you show a pattern in practice, once you have your evidence, one or two things are going to happen. I always say the S and S. They either going to poop or get off the pot. Can't stay there. But you have to be willing to. To, like I said, it's not it's not for the for the faintest. And like I said, I'm turning older, and you know, it's certain things on a, especially now. They just I'm gonna be honest that do after the pain, they was already hiring different people, but now it's so that a lot of companies are so desperate to get somebody, they just want a warm body. They just want a warm body, and as a result of that, it is it is showing in. And in management, you have managers that are, you know, that not trained, don't know how to talk to people, talk to people in a kind of way. And you don't know what that person has been through before they come to work. And then you or, you know, get online. Some people are working from home. Some people are finding, you know, I find it. It's more relaxing because I don't have to deal with, you know, so and so office looking at me, wondering where am I at when I have when I'm you know my med form and kick in. And I got to go to the bathroom two or three times a day, or better yet, when I'm I'm not feeling good and I can't understand. You know, he looking at me. He's not a diabetic, but he looking at me. Why 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 you you know you doing this? Being working at home gives me that flexibility. Well, you know what? On my lunch break. You know, or between calls, I can go down there, put a load of clothes in and wash clothes. Or I can clean up my little space. I can clean up my bedroom. I can, you know, I can do some things. Take my dog for a walk. Bring it back. Things that I couldn't have done when I worked from home. Because when I, when I worked, you know, he would probably have to stay in there until I get off. That's eight hours. But since I work... You know, from home, I could go walk the dog up and down the driveway and then come on back, be through with it. So this is, these are the important issues. Now, another thing that we are talking about, a lot of companies that uh, when you, uh, when you, you know, they may offer to settle. They may say, well, you know what? We don't want to fight this. We already know, you know, when it gets to that point, you know, we don't want to fight. We just want to. Go ahead and, 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 you know, just let her go. Well, you can have your job back. You can. I'm not saying that you can't. You can put, make that part of your uh, your thing. Ha, ha, they, they hire you back. But I'm telling you now, what they don't tell you is that they're going to give you some drama. They're going to watch you like a fine tooth comb. Let me get a pen. They're going to watch you like this. Every minute they're gonna be 
every minute that you doing something, they're going to be watching you. They're going to make sure because they want to make sure that they fire you. They're going to fire you. I don't go back. If, if I, if you, if you sue a company, don't go back. And I've had people that sue, tried to went, you know, I'm, I'm, we doing the settlement negotiations. You want $500,000. Okay. I had one girl that Miss did her. I want five hundred thousand. I don't know where she came up with that month, that amount. Okay, did you suffer anything? No, nah, I had me a job. I always said, okay, did did it hurt your credit? Did it do? No, 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 no. You can't just come on rambling out for the money. You gotta look at you know, look at my expenses. Who am I? Am I helping somebody? What am I doing? Is it you know causing friction? You know, things like that. You got to think of all of that. And then come up with a reasonable amount. The, you know, I tell people, start high. But don't start up at the heaven and then say, you know what? Start at a reasonable level. A reasonable level. And then work your way down. But don't work your way to the point where you're just, you know, it, it, it didn't benefit you. Second of all, who pays the taxes on that money? Either you're going to pay it or they're going to pay it. Or better yet, you can ask for, say, look, I just want all my expenses. Say, this is my expenses of what, what I had to live off of when, when I was unemployed. And make it optional where you can get unemployment. Don't just settle and then settle the money. At, look at it like this. Like let, I'm just throwing it out there. Let's say you got $40,000 from your employer. But you didn't put in the option for unemployment. Just throwing it out there. Okay, so you put in the 40000 Okay, you paid all your bills. You, you got a little cheese left over, a cheddar or, or wampum or whatever you call it. You, you, you got that and then you say, okay, I've been out of work for like three months. Now the money, it, it went from 40000 to 1000 but your bills are three thousand. Okay, now I need to file for unemployment. But they didn't admit no fault. Now in a settlement, they're not gonna admit that they did anything wrong. They just gonna say they they want to get rid of you and whatever. Okay, so they are gonna say, well, okay, well, you know, I, they can turn around and fight you for unemployment on the other end. Okay, you got the forty. Now you can't get unemployment. So now your income is limited. Always, if you're going to settle with anybody, I'm not giving no legal advice. If you're going to settle for anybody, any, anything, make sure that you include options to open for unemployment. Make sure that you include that they remove anything negative or say anything negative in their part. So the only thing they can say about you I ask me personally, I will ask for a letter of recommendation to be included so that that way that the, the company would never, would nobody ever have to contact them. And then when I submit my application, I make copies of it and submit it to the employer or I upload it with, you know, my stuff. That way they don't have to ever talk to them again. Another thing that I would suggest that you do is when you get the settlement is that don't be telling everybody. Just, you know, pay your bills, put a little money on the side and, you know, start, you know, looking for your job. Just do it where you won't be stress free. Because I'm going to tell you something. When you start telling anybody, I don't care what it is. Oh, man, they just paid me five big ones or six big ones or something like that. You're going to have folks trying to borrow and beg and they're going to come up with their problems, you know, and, you know. You can't help everybody. You cannot help everybody. It's not meant for you to help everybody. It's meant for you. Um, make sure, like I said, again, make sure that they pay the taxes on the money. You can ask for that, that they pay the taxes on their end and stuff. So when you get your un, uh, your income tax, it would already show that they have already paid the taxes. Now, if you're just getting your expenses, I, look, I just want you to pay for expenses you know, you may want to check with the IRS on that, you know, that's just me, but those are just your expenses. 
So I hope this video uh, is very educational. I hope it gives you some breadcrumbs. I'm just going to recap because I don't want to stay past 30 minutes on this video. But again, start documentation. These little books right here are a dollar treat. They are dollar twenty-five. They used to be a dollar. And now they're a dollar twenty-five. You know, get your book. You notice that on here I keep tabs. Uh, especially when I'm uh, you know, I'm talking to somebody or I'm in the middle of something or put tabs in there. I put tabs in there. And you can get tabs from Dollar Tree or, you know, like me, I keep tabs. I keep them all the way around. They, these right here, I just bought these, a whole pack of these because of the fact that I'm, I'm reaching out to different people, bill collectors, all of that, you know. And um, we're going to talk about that in the third part, discrimination as far as credit and, and lenders and what can you do, especially with your landlord. But, you know, right now, like I said, when you're dealing with that, this your, this your buddy. Start to make sure that, you know, any emails that you send to your manager, you know, don't be too, if you, if you go, if you're going the way that you need to go, don't sit here and be scared to say, well, so-and-so on, I do it all the time. You know, when they know that you know that you, they're not, that you're not playing with them, some of them back off. You know, when I get something that's so crazy that I'm like, wait a minute, whoa, that not only is that illegal, that can get me fired. Shoot, it can get me fired. I mean, charges can be brought up on me. Send that email, per, thank you, you know, per our conversation. That letting them know that I'm, I'm reflecting from that conversation. On this day of this email, you and notice I'm pretending like I'm typing. You stated that I needed to do this and do that and do this and do that. I just want to clarify is this is what you asking me to do. Put them on the spot. Put them on the spot. On so and so, so and so, I filed a complaint against my supervisor, John Doe, and because he did this to me, he touched my butt. He did this. He said this. He 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 talked about this. He showed me a picture. Start establishing. I'm just letting you know, and I wanted to clarify. You stated that John has the, to overlook John because he has a policy of he has a history of doing this, and he don't mean no harm. Is that what you saying? That's your setup right there. That's your that's your foundation right there. Because one thing for sure is that yes, now she's got to respond to this email. Or he got to respond to this email. All these things that's happening on so-and-so, so-and-so. Blase, blase was acting weird today. He came up to me and asked me that I want to date him. I said no. As a result of that, he told me he going to get me. He got something for me. Right that. That's taking precaution. So if and let's say if anything happened to you, let's say it gets to the point where, you know what, it's documentation. It's documentation. Because I'm going to tell you something. A lot of this stuff that happening, I'm, I'm, you know what, it, that, that especially that's going on on a job, a lot of times the red flags have been there. The red flags are there. But, you know, companies don't want to address it. They don't want to do it. They know he's a psychotic person or he flirts on the job or he talks about gays and, and, and lesbians and he talks about disability people, but they know that. And he and, and a lot of times they, they know it and don't do nothing about it. You can file complaints and he's still working there. And you'll be like, I don't understand. This man got more complaints. Then, then, then anything I know, but he's still working there. Okay, well, if you want to work to get him fired or her fired, that's on another level. My thing is that if they don't want to change policy and if they don't want to comply with the EEOC and they, they've they been letting it go on for so long, you may not make a difference. So what you do is you file your complaint, you get, you, you get enough to move on. Yes, you can ask for severance pay. 
Yeah, you can negotiate your termination or, or resignation or however it is. Get that and move on. And don't worry about it. And then start looking for you another job. But you need to have a cushion. Don't quit a job without having a job. And don't just quit a job and say, well, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to go and quit a job. And, they, and then they give you bad reference. And then you have to go and fight that too. So the, I hope this video makes it a little bit easy. Give you some breadcrumbs to look at and think about and stuff. And once again, a member 30 minutes. I want to thank you guys. You know, it's, it's, I'm going to go and start. I'm, I'm just going to relax. I got my little podcast coming up. I hope you enjoy. Send me a link if you, you know, send me an email if you want to join. I'll send you the link. I'm still getting it set up. Even though it's supposed to be today, I'm getting it set up. And I thank you guys. You know, I'm, I'm new at this, so bear with me, okay? Thank you guys. And you have a great day.